In the month of July this year, the capital of Delhi witnessed unprecedented floods. Water levels in the river Yamuna that flows through the city reached its highest ever level at 208.66 meters, much above the last great floods in the capital in 1978 when it had reached a little more than 207 meters. The flooding had been set off by a bout of torrential rains in Delhi and the hill states like Himachal Pradesh, leading to the release of a huge volume of water from the Hatnikund barrage in Haryana, right into the capital city located downstream. The floods ended up displacing more than 25,000 people. One incident of flash floods was enough to change the course of the Yamuna causing it to flow directly by the historic Red Fort. Watching the monument surrounded by water was an ironic reminder of the 17th century when the fort was built and the river actually flowed through these parts of the city. This year, however, the deluge ended up flooding water treatment plants, the arterial ring road, plush and underprivileged neighbourhoods. Our reporter Juhi Chaudhary belongs to a low-lying area in the city. Despite her home being safe from the inundation, her life was still affected by this year's floods. So, I live in Model Town in North Delhi, one of the low-lying areas of the city, and which is also located on the old flood plains of the river Yamuna. In the year 1978, this area had faced floods. So the ground floor of my house had got flooded then. This year, we didn't face any flooding during Delhi floods in July, but we faced drinking water problems for good two weeks. The Wazirabad treatment plant that supplies water to our area had got submerged. It was problematic as branded water cans were not available in local markets due to high demand. But this time, there were many other parts of the city that came under the grip of unusual floods. Today, I'm here to find out why Delhi faced unprecedented floods this year and what can the city do to become more flood resilient. To begin unraveling the reasons behind the Delhi floods, our first stop today is going to be this biodiversity park, developed by the Delhi Development Authority on the western banks of Yamuna. This site was restored by ecologist Professor C.R. Babu, and it gives a glimpse of how Yamuna's floodplain should be. Let's find out more. We have developed here uh, what you call one wetland, catchment wetland, and we simply restored the natural catchment wetland and we deepen it and now it stores 500 million gallons of flood water. Simply put, the job of a catchment wetland is to capture flood water and store it, thereby recharging groundwater. This particular catchment wetland ended up with a new lease of life when its desilting and restoration work was started by Dr. Babu's team in 2009. Various species of plants and grasses were carefully chosen, making the vegetation suitable for a riparian ecosystem. Now it can withstand water logging for up to three months. The result, this biodiversity park on the banks of the Yamuna continues to thrive despite this year's floods. When you talk about flood plain, it is not only the flood plain. The flood plain has what you call floodplain catchment wetlands, floodplain treatment wetlands, and you have a grasslands, and you have a, what you call, marshes, and you have a floodplain forest. All these play a major role in, what you call, preventing the flood water entering into the low-lying areas, and also preventing the rise in the water level. What we've just seen is what a floodplain should look like. However, many of Delhi's catchment wetlands lie defunct and in dire need of desilting. Additionally, the floodplains across the capital remain severely compromised. 
enter into the water and cause a lot of uh, pollution. You see, the and planes are a critical component of river system. What happened to the flood plains in the downstream of Vajrabad Reservoir in Delhi stretch is that the width of the flood plain has been reduced from 10 kilometers to zero uh, width uh, at some places like ITO. Uh, instead, the main function of flood plain is to provide a free way to the flood water, free way to the flood water, so that there will be what you call horizontal flow and there will be no increase in the vertical water level. But in the what you call reduction in the width of the flood plain and because of presence of 23 odd bridges and barrages, right, there is a resistance to the free flow of flood water and consequently the water level has increased and water has entered into many low-lying areas like uh, what is Red Fort and Supreme Court and many other low-lying uh, localities. In addition to an imperiled Yamuna floodplain, the answer to this year's floods in Delhi leads us back to another set of water channels, the dense network of drains in the city that ultimately flow into the Yamuna. I am at ITO in the heart of the capital city. The road that you see behind me is a major arterial road, which got totally flooded. It is said that clogging of stormwater drains also added to the woes. Uh, for example, we met Dr. A.K. Gosain from IIT Delhi, who has studied the complex drain network of the city extensively. Is incorporating, that was only the showing the natural drains. The next one is showing what we have incorporated, which is the man-made drain. He first explains how rising levels in the Yamuna leads to an immediate clogging of the city's drainage system. They are encroached, their total path is encroached. There are houses built inside the drains. Around 22 drains are there which evacuate the, its water taken from the landmass around in and around Delhi into Yamuna. They couldn't evacuate themselves because their level was lower than the level of water in the Yamuna. So at that time they closed the gates. The, 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 at the poor point we have the, the stop gates. Those gates are closed so that no water should flow from Yamuna to the, the Delhi. So that was what happened, but at the same time, this water gets stagnated, which the rainfall which occurred in Delhi, that couldn't be evacuated. So it, this water will stand there till the level in the Yamuna goes down. So that data was given to us around 16, uh, middle of 16, and by uh, 2018, we had given them the report. In 2018, Dr. Gusain had submitted a master drainage plan to the Delhi government, suggesting ways to mitigate flooding and waterlogging in the capital. All these flooding reasons, we identified for each drain what is the catchment area of that drain, and when the same amount of rainfall falls in that area, how much volume of water will get generated, and whether that size of the drain is, is uh, able to carry it without flooding the nearby areas. If it is not going to do that, then how much, how long the water will be stagnating in which area? So we even quantified those areas. As part of the many plausible solutions presented for an effectively functioning drainage system during a flood-like situation, desilting was among the most essential. We said that the first thing to be done is desilting properly the all the drains. Well, desilting is a major cause of flooding. If, the, if, your, if your drain is not effective, then the whole water will flow on the landmass. It will never go through the drain. When I mean, if there is a blockage, you have around one kilometer of uh, drain which is desilted. Somewhere down the last um, 300 uh, meters or so, there is a two meter blockage which has not been done. Then whole of this exercise which has been done, this total resilting is of no use because water wouldn't pass through that. So we had told them that 
and we also observed that there are many drains in Delhi which are totally covered and they don't have excess. So how we are doing the desilting of those drains? It is normally considered that there are 22 natural drains in Delhi. But according to Dr. Gusain, in reality, there are more than 200 segments of natural stormwater drains and over 4,500 kilometers of artificial drains in the city. Most of them, however, are either clogged, heavily paved over, or carry sewage and debris around the year, leaving no capacity to carry rainwater. According to Dr. Gusain, the government is yet to acknowledge his recommendations. We tried verifying this through an official response, but were unable to at the time of filing this report. Dotted with more than 1,000 small ponds and water bodies, Delhi can be considered a city of lakes. But over the years, many of these green oases have either disappeared, been built over, or left in a state of degradation. The capital's deteriorating wetlands are another reason why the city is prone to water logging. So my next stop is this small lake called Nenny Lake near my residence in Model Town. This is one of the last relics of natural water bodies in the area and is very important for flood control. Led by fellow resident Richard Chaudhary, the residents started the Save Nanny Lake campaign. I used to come here for morning walk and that summer I saw mass fish deaths were happening here. The water quality was such that fishes were dying and there were heaps of fishes lying everywhere on the pavement here. So, and a lot of stench was there. So, I don't know, that, that morning I came here for a walk and I felt that, you know, even after being educated, I can't live in a community like this. I have to speak out, I have to do something about this. Gradually, it became into a big campaign. Around 300, 400 people had joined. We had marched around the lake and we had, even we had approached schools and even the school children of Model Town had sent postcards to ministers to revive this Nenny Lake. Despite the large numbers and their role in an ecosystem, Delhi's smaller ponds and water bodies remain unnotified. The Nanny Lake too is one of them, with no official rules or protection. At this wetland in Shehdara, our reporter is on her way to meet Prakhar Rawal, a wildlife biologist who has taken it upon himself to identify the capital's obscure wetlands and through it map their bird life. Mostly, you know, I've seen water bodies which are degraded. How does this one look? This is really nice because uh, it's fenced. There's uh, natural vegetation growing here. I can see ducks, grapes, and I can also see some nests there. So, if you see there... A PhD the... student, it was during his studies that Prakhar realized the lack of any substantial documentation of small ponds in the city. Where, where, uh, where... I initially wanted to study how urbanization has affected birds in some of these larger wetlands such as Okla and uh, Sultanpur. But eventually, when I started looking at the map, I realized that Delhi is dotted with a huge number of ponds which nobody knows about. So this goes to somewhere around 550 to 600 in numbers. So I decided to study these instead and I surveyed around 40, 39 ponds. And I found that these ponds contain huge amount of biodiversity, probably the largest biodiversity which has been recorded in any mega city anywhere. Prakhar has so far mapped almost 600 non-notified water bodies in the city by plotting their coordinates on Google Maps. Going forward, this can be an important first step, both from the perspective of wetlands preservation and improving their function during floods. There are many low-lying areas across the city, and they serve as the wetlands. And these wetlands pull the catchments from the neighboring areas. And if these wetlands are filled up, are encroached, or utilized for some other purpose other than holding the, what you call, rainwater, what will happen when the river is in flood, when there is a backflow of the sewers, the entire settlement would be indentated or submerged. So therefore, these wetlands need to be protected.
The Delhi Jal Board, the water agency of the Delhi government, on its part, is reportedly working to revive 265 water bodies across Delhi. As our reporter journeyed through the capital city, meeting experts, one thing seemed clear that the river Yamuna, its floodplains and the city's drainage system cannot be ignored any longer. Developmental planning should be done, keeping ecological integrity of the river system in mind. Without that, the capital of India will need to brace itself for more devastation in the coming years. Thanks for watching Eco India. If you like the story, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to scroll.in on YouTube.